want to create ultra realistic human images in the new stable diffusion tree well where you know more because in this video i'm going to be telling you how you can create human images portraits in the new stable diffusion tree by discussing all the parameters prompts prompt formula so hello everyone my name is usman and welcome back to skill curve in this video we're going to talk about a very important topic in ai image generation which is ultra realism in the new stable diffusion tree so without further I do let's just jump right into the video all right guys so in this video we're going to specifically focus on all the human faces with different lightings different shots like it will be half body shot close body shot and all those you know shot types will specifically focus on human images and see how you can get ultra realism in stable diffusion tree so you guys can see i am in the home page uh, of my comfy ui in stable diffusion tree and i purposely made uh this workflow smaller so that it could fit my screen and I can go ahead and do all the work simultaneously. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom all that so that it should be visible for you guys as well, all right? All right, so these will be uh, most of the important things that I'll be required throughout this video. So we have text encode, which is prompt input. Then we have text encode and negative prompt input. Then we have the images and few of our important parameters that are really important for ultra realism in stable diffusion tree, all right? So first of all, uh, if we talk about the prompt formula for ultra realism, because you guys know in stable diffusion, that is the most important thing, right? So if you see online in different blogs and other things, they say the more you put information in the prompt for stable diffusion, good results you're gonna get, okay? So I'm gonna do a live demo test for you guys and show you how exactly I'm gonna get results in stable diffusion tree, all right? So I'm gonna copy this prompt, let's just say, so this is a photo of a young woman high like here sitting outside restaurant. So it looks like a very complex prompt formula, right? It will be very hard for you guys to understand this as well. So let's just say if I copy this prompt, paste it right over here. And then in the negative prompt, I put the same thing, all right? All right, so it's all done, you guys. And then let's just go ahead and kill this prompt and see what results we're going to get. All right, here we go. Okay, you guys can see we did get a very beautiful image of a girl with a very good lighting and everything but yeah, you guys can notice oh we do see a bit of a deformation in the hands right so yeah other than that lighting everything looks absolutely perfect right so we have photo of a young woman highlight here sitting outside restaurant during dress rim lighting studio lighting and all the details everything looks top notch but we do have some kind of a deformation in the hands right so these kind of things that you're going to get if you play around with the old prompts that we used to do in Stable Diffusion Excel Turbo and all those things. So now I'm going to go ahead and make things easy for you guys, okay? So we're going to be using the same prompt formula that we used in our previous video uh, for human realistic images for ultra realism. So that will contain subject, appearance or clothing details setting a lighting and time of the day all right so with just this prompt formula you'll be able to get perfect images uh with no deformation no nothing whatsoever you'll get crazy images with very fine detail for your human images in ultra realism okay so yeah i basically went ahead and adapted this prompt formula to the help from tad gbt as we always do and it basically provided me all the prompts with different varieties we have full body shot we have half body photo and we had three quarter view photo of basically every possible human images that we could think of, okay? So we're gonna test out all these prompts and see how good uh, we're gonna get the images and everything, okay? So first of all, let's just go ahead and test out a full body shot. So in that, I'm gonna type in my prompt that a full body photo of a young woman wearing a flowing red sundress and a wide brimmed hat. She had long straight black hair. She's standing on a Cobblestone Street in Santorini with whitewashed buildings and the blue sea visible in the background, all those details, okay? So this contains everything that was there in our prompt folder, right? And for the negative prompt, we're going to go ahead and use the same negative prompt as we did in our previous video, which was our universal negative prompt, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and copy all of these details, come to my uh, negative prompt and paste it right over here, right? Now everything is set up. And now let's just go ahead and cue this prompt and see if we have to play around with the parameters uh, to get a perfect result. Okay, so let's just see the results of this first of all. All right, you guys, here you go. We have a perfect image with no deformation whatsoever. You guys can see, right? The hands are really good. Uh, the detail is good. So we have a full body photo of a young woman wearing a flowing red sundress. Because you guys know in stable diffusion, getting a perfect full body photo is really, really hard, right? But yet, 
uh, with this strong formula, this everything, it managed to get the perfect result. We don't see any deformation in the hands, in the legs, everything looks good. Just, I think um, it's lacking a bit of an exposure issue over here. I'm not sure what, but let's just play around with CFG, okay? I'm going to do this uh, four, okay? And I'm going to increase my steps to 35, okay? All right, let's just go ahead and cue this prompt once again and see um, what results we're going to get now. Um, Here we go. All right, so just uh, the detail in the face have changed. I think I was very much liking the previous one, so I'm going to decrease my steps as 28, okay? Just I'm going to play around with the CFG, do 3.5 this time, okay? 3.6 actually. Let's just see now. All right, here we go. I think now this is the, uh, the perfect one. We have a full body photo of a young woman wearing a flowing red sundress, a wide brimmed hat, and the background you guys can see is looking really, really good. Uh, it's looking kind of a realistic photo. No, nothing. No deformation in that. Looks really good, okay? Okay, let's do uh, our next example of a half body shot. So I'm going to type a half body photo of an elderly man with a weathered face and a white beard wearing a worn out brown jacket and a flat cap. He's sitting on a wooden man with a cane and you know, all these details. Negative prompt is going to be the same. Let's just go ahead and put our CFG to 4.5 as it was before. Okay, let's cue the prompt and see how it's going to turn out. All right, here we go, guys. Look at this. Wow, this is absolutely perfect. Uh, just, you know, I think we asked for a half body photo, but it managed to give me a full body photo. I don't know why. And we do have a little bit of a deformation in the shoes, right? So let's just go ahead and play around uh, with parameters and see like whether uh, we'll able to fix that or not. All right, here we go. Now this one is looking good. So now we have kind of a half body photo of an elderly man with a weathered face. And I basically did what I just put in a bit detail uh, in the negative prompt, like extra foot and extra shoe. And it basically managed to get rid of that. And now we have a perfect photo. I think we do have a bit of a, a deformation in the hands, in the fingers. So we can fix that very easily. I'm going to add that in my negative prompt again, like extra finger deformation in the hands or something like that. You can add uh, you know what suits you the most. So let's just go ahead and cue this once again and see whether uh, we get the perfect image this time. All right, here we go. So now we have another image uh, with the shoe over here for some reason. Let's just go ahead and get rid of that as well. All right, so here we go. So now we have uh, kind of a perfect result after some tries because obviously Stable Diffusion does ask you few tries to get the perfect result that you want. So now we have a perfect shot of an elderly man with a weathered face and a white beard. Wearing a worn out brown jacket and a flat cap. Okay, he's sitting on a wooden bench uh, with a can in a small lush greenery. You guys can see and yeah, everything, every detail looks good. We don't have any deformation in the hands now. The foot is great and the details in the face, everything looks perfect, all right? Okay, so now let's just go ahead and do some close-up photos and see how well we're going to get details in that in Stable Diffusion because obviously, you know, uh, the portraits, the close-up photos, they hold a really good significance in AI with generation. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my phone a close-up half portrait photo of a woman in her 30s with shoulder length over in here wearing a crisp white shirt and black rim glasses and all the details. Let's just go ahead and cue this front, okay? All right, here we go. Absolutely perfect, right? So now we have a perfect close-up half portrait photo of a woman in her 30s with shoulder length over in here. You guys can see wearing a crisp white shirt and black rimmed glasses. So you guys can see everything, the portrait, the bouquet effect on the books looks absolutely great. And yeah, we have a very good detail on the face, no deformation, no nothing whatsoever. So yeah, here you go. Here you can uh, easily generate very beautiful close-up shots uh, with Stable Diffusion 3. Let's take a few more examples for a close-up shot. Okay, so this time I'm gonna take a close-up half portrait photo of a man in his late 20s with a sharp jawline and a tattoo of a compass on his neck okay so i'm getting a bit complex in my prompts now wearing a black leather jacket and a white t-shirt he's standing in front of a graffiti covered train station okay so there's a lot of information into that so yeah let's just go ahead and how this is gonna turn out i'm really excited for this one all right here we go absolutely perfect check out the details into that so we have a close-up half portrait photo of a man in his late 20s okay checked absolutely perfect with a sharp jawline, all right, and a tattoo of a compass on his neck. Perfect, right, you guys? 
Wearing a black leather jacket, checked, and a white t-shirt, checked. He is standing in front of a graffiti graffiti covered train station in Berlin, checked, checked. So everything looked perfect in the image. It basically checked all our information in the prompt and provided us this image, which looks really, really good, right? All right, so now let's jump to our uh, next example for close-up half portrait photo because this is a really um, fun category uh, in ultra realism. So this time I'm gonna type in my prompt that a close-up half portrait photo of a young boy with tousled blonde hair and freckles wearing a red and blue striped t-shirt. He has an inquisitive expression and wide curious eyes. He's standing on a sandy beach. Okay. All right, decent details into that. Let's check out the result. All right, here you go, guys. Check out the details. Everything looks really, really good. So we have a young boy with also blonde, blonde hair and freckles. Yeah, I think uh, for the close-up portraits, these parameters suit absolutely great, right? For the steps, it should be 28 for your ultra-realism photos. CFG should vary around 3.5 to 4.5. Sample name should be this. Schedule should be SGM uniform, all right? So yeah, these parameters, these settings are really, really good, right? All right, let's do last example for our close-up half portrait. Uh, of an elderly woman this time with short silver hair wearing a light blue shawl and a pearl necklace she has kind wrinkled eyes okay let's cue this prompt and see the details all right take a look at this this looks really really good right so we have a perfect half portrait photo of an elderly woman with short silver hair wearing a light blue shawl and a pearl necklace she has a kind wrinkled eyes and a general smile right so everything about this image is absolutely perfect right you guys all right so apart from that another amazing thing that you can do with a stable diffusion tree is you can go ahead and create celebrity images with that as well like you can go ahead and customize your celebrity images according to your taste and create amazing results like let me show you how you can do that in ultra realism, right? So yeah, I basically went ahead and get help from chat GPT in that. So I said create me prompts like this for celebrities like, you know, Dwayne Johnson, Taylor Swift, Cristiano Ronaldo, etc. So it basically provided me all the prompts, uh, you know, with celebrities in it, okay? So now let's just go ahead and create these images and see how well are we gonna get those in stable diffusion 3. So first of all, I'm gonna try of Dwayne Johnson The Rock. So I'm gonna type in my prompt that a close-up half portrait photo of a Dwayne Johnson with a warm smile wearing a fitted black t-shirt that highlights his muscular build. He has a clean shaved head and a neatly trimmed body. So we'll be having Cody in that. Let's just go ahead and try this. I'm gonna click on Q prompt. All right, here we go. So we have like now kind of a close-up portrait a photo of a Dwayne Johnson with warm smile wearing a fitted black t-shirt. See, it feels kind of a carry catcher, but yeah, it definitely has the features of Dwayne Johnson in that. It looks really, really good, right? Now, let's just go ahead and try one more example and play around with celebrity images. All right, this time I'm going to go with Taylor Swift and I'm going to say close up half portrait, photo of a Taylor Swift with her signature red lipstick and platinum blonde hair. Let's just go ahead and try this. All right, so here we go. So now we have a half a uh, close-up portrait photo of a Taylor Swift with her signature red lipstick and platinum blonde hair styled in loose waves, wearing a sparkling silver gun. So obviously, it won't create you the exact Taylor Swift, but yeah, you guys can see, we do have lots of similar features of Taylor Swift in our image. It looks half decent, really, really good. Let's just go ahead and do one last for our celebrity images. And this time, I'm gonna go with Will Smith, all right? So I'm going to say a close-up half portrait photo of Will Smith with a charismatic smile, wearing a navy blue suit and a crisp white shirt. Let's just cue this prompt. All right, here we go, guys. So yeah, this is the one. This is absolutely perfect. This is literally a Will Smith. So we have a close-up half portrait photo of Will Smith with charismatic smile, wearing a navy blue suit and a crisp white shirt. His short hair is neatly groomed and he has trimmed goatee, right? So yeah, this one looks really, really good the best we have done in celebrity images, right? So here you go, guys. This was a review of how you can go ahead and do ultra realism in Stable Diffusion 3. We talked about every possible human images you can create with Stable Diffusion 3. So yeah, I hope you like this video, guys. And if you want to see more content on Stable Diffusion, like this video and subscribe to our channel. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.